Hello. Today I'm going to take you through various elements of fetal fibronectin testing, from background on the test, through to installation of your new analyzer, and training on how to use it. Firstly, I'm going to give you a background overview of the concept of fetal fibronectin testing, and why it can play a big part in the management of women at risk of preterm birth. Often the symptoms are real, but the risk isn't. In the UK, approximately one in five women exhibit signs and symptoms of preterm labour at some point in their pregnancy. That equates to around 140,000 women per year. Of this number, studies show that more than 95% of these women don't go on to deliver within the next 14 days, leaving less than 5% that do. Mismanagement of women in threatened preterm labour can lead to many impacts, directly affecting the patient, healthcare providers, hospitals, and the national service as a whole. Fetal fibronectin is the adhesive glycoprotein, or GLU, at the maternal fetal interface. Presence in cervicovaginal secretions is highly associated with risk of preterm delivery. Likewise, its absence is very reassuring that imminent delivery is not likely making fetal fibronectin an excellent negative predictor for helping to rule out women of true preterm labour. Qualitative tests only issue a positive or negative result. All qualitative tests based on a single threshold are prone to increasing false positive or negative results around the threshold. As you know, we can now measure fetal fibronectin quantitatively, addressing the limitations of a qualitative style test. Fetal fibronectin is effective at assessing the risk of preterm labour, as it is found in the four main causative pathways of preterm labour. Within these pathways, fetal fibronectin leakage occurs prior to cervical length change. This is due to it being a biochemical marker rather than biophysical. In the UK, fetal fibronectin is validated for use within two groups of patients between 22 and 35 plus 6 weeks for symptomatic women and between 18 and 27 plus 6 weeks for asymptomatic women with risk factors for preterm birth. Your Perilink system is an instrument that can detect the quantitative fetal fibronectin in cervicovaginal secretions. It rapidly assesses the risk of preterm delivery, stratifying preterm birth risk by fetal fibronectin concentration. It is important to note that the specimen collection kits for fetal fibronectin testing are at no extra cost in the UK, which is key as the fetal fibronectin sample must be taken prior to any examination or manipulation of the cervix. This affords greater flexibility as samples can be collected and are stable for up to eight hours at room temperature. Only samples with no contraindications requiring analysis will utilize a fetal fibronectin cassette. With less than 10 minutes analysis time, you will receive a results label, which details your quality control, traceability such as user ID and patient number, and your quantitative fetal fibronectin result. Using data from the following study, you can see the stratification of preterm birth risk by fetal fibronectin concentrate at under and equal to seven days, under and equal 14 days, and under 34 weeks. You may notice that the risk of delivery in under seven days at 49 nanograms per milliliter is as low as it is at 199 nanograms per milliliter. These quantifications allow you to be much more specific about the pathway for each individual patient, not just imminently, but later in her pregnancy. I mentioned before that quantitative fetal fibronectin has further advanced in assisting with the management of the risk of preterm labour in high-risk asymptomatic women and is licensed for use between 18 and 27 plus 6 weeks. These women may have a history such as a previous preterm delivery, cervical surgery or a shortened cervix. Together with a cervical length measurement, maternal fetal medicine consultants have been able to better manage these patients by setting up surveillance plans with the ideal outcome of returning many of these women who are deemed low risk for a spontaneous preterm birth back to routine antenatal care. Again, you can see that as the quantitative fetal fibronectin result increases within this asymptomatic patient group, 
so does the risk of delivery. The following study shows that nearly 70% of asymptomatic high-risk women between 23 and 28 weeks of pregnancy will have a quantitative fetal fibronectin of less than 10 nanograms per milliliter. We know that having a quantitative fetal fibronectin less than 10 nanograms per milliliter means that their risk of a preterm birth is no greater than a general UK obstetric population, which is 3.3%. So they can likely be managed per normal antenatal care. The Women's Health Academic Centre and King's College London have developed the Quip app as a tool to predict spontaneous preterm birth, incorporating fetal fibronectin, cervical length, and risk factors in symptomatic and high-risk asymptomatic women. This app is available to download free through iTunes and Google Play. Clinicians are widely using this tool, and you can find the Quip Toolkit endorsed by the British Association of Perinatal Medicine here. For additional support, please visit www.ffntest.co.uk or email ffntest at hologic.com.